Thanks for listening to the Mornings with Carmen LaBerge podcast, made available thanks to support from listeners just like you. Your daily encouragement that God has the world in the hollow of his hand. This is Mornings with Carmen LaBerge on Faith Radio. If we're gonna fly, we fly like eagles. All right, it's possible that no one has said it yet to you this morning, so let me be the one. You are loved. You are loved. You are beloved of the Lord, and I love you. I love that we have the opportunity to get together um, over this particular medium. It doesn't matter if you're listening like on the actual like physical radio. Maybe you're listening um, streaming at MyFaithRadio.com. Maybe you're listening on the Faith Radio app. However you're listening, maybe you're listening to this as a podcast later on, and you were just struck by the truth that you are loved. You are loved. I uh, I spend uh, the little breaks that we have, like uh, checking in on what's happening on the text line. And sometimes that means I scroll back on some things because I'll get a note from somebody and then I'll be like, oh, look, back in October, they sent me a note and I didn't see that. And so that has happened this morning a couple of times. So we're praying with Beverly for um, her sister, particular concerns, uh, emotional, physical, spiritual health. So Beverly, um, I see you. I hear you. Um, The Lord is with you. He loves you. He loves that you love your sister. He loves your sister more than you do. Um, And he desires all of those um, good things in her life. So we're just praying that God would reveal himself in a way that she can't resist that she would um, turn to him and that 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 would ultimately make all the difference um, physically, spiritually, emotionally, relationally, all of those things. Uh, Sweet Andrew is on the text line this morning. Andrew's on the text line a lot. Here here is something to know about Andrew. He is a fairly new believer. And Andrew reminds me constantly that the stuff that I think everybody knows is not stuff that everybody knows. So I love Andrew. I love the refreshment that he gives me every single day, um, knowing that, like, so Andrew, I know you're listening, and I just, I just love how real you are and how honest you are, and you're just like, I don't know what that is. Like, what is that? What are you talking about? What are these... You know, what is what is this whole word of the year thing? Okay, we're going to really unpack that with Vanitha Reisner at the beginning of next week. But um, for those of you who maybe are like Andrew, and you don't know this practice that some people engage in where, you know, towards the end of a year, we just really put it before the Lord to give us a particular word to focus on in the year ahead. And so a couple of years ago, the word that I landed upon was the word purge. Let me tell you, God taught me a lot. I still, I mean, I look around in my life and I still, there's so many things I still need to purge. Um, but I I have too much. I have too much stuff. I have too many commitments. And it crowds out God. It just does. It crowds out the things of God. It crowds out the way you can prioritize the things of God. So the word purge, God taught me a lot about. There was a lot of uh, biblical study that year on the way that God refines and burns things off and chaff and yeah, all those things came up in the in the year of purge. Um, and my friend Jessica came up from Atlanta and actually helped me purge. Like there were, and, and that would be helpful again, Jessica, if you're listening and you're like, hmm, <laughs> Carmen needs another, she needs a 2024 refreshment on the, uh, on the purge uh, process and practice. And then, and then um, the word peace. I spent the last year focusing on the word peace. And that was interesting in a year of war, open warfare, increasing warfare. When, um, when Hamas attacked Israel uh, the first Saturday of October, and I'm, I mean, my word is peace. And I'm like, this, this God, like, wh- what? Um, and, and I'm just constantly reminded as I focus on Jesus as the Prince of Peace that he came to bring division. That is so crazy, so contrary to the way we think about peace. But Jesus is the dividing line. Jesus is the dividing line. 
Yes, he is the Prince of Peace, and through him we are granted the peace which passes all understanding, and I can live in contentment in the midst of any circumstance. But that doesn't mean, that does not mean that everyone is going to live peaceably with everyone else. Why? Because people are at war with God, literally at war with God. And therefore, they're at war with themselves, and they're at war with each other. That is, that is one of the things that God really taught me in my focus on the word peace in the last year. So this year, the word is reconnect. Uh, and as the Lord um, unfolds that for me um, in my prayer life and um, scripture study, I'll, uh, I'll bring more of that to the fore. So thank you. Um, thank you so much. Um, To each of you who engage on the text line, it is a great encouragement to me to know that you're there. Um, uh, Bob Castro is on the text line almost every day, um, amplifying something that is happening in the show. Like he's like, hey, here's a scripture passage. Hey, here's a uh, C.S. Lewis reference. Hey, Uh, you know, and so I love that. I love that kind of engagement in the conversation. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You can participate as well, 877-933-2484. It's a great place to drop your prayer requests, um, to share where in the Word you are, to answer some ridiculous question that I ask on air. Mm -hmm. It's a great place for all of that. So put me in your phone, 877-933-2484, and engage on the text line. And if you're listening to this as a podcast and you're like, well, Carmen's not on air right now, so she's not paying attention to the text line, if you just... Be sure you put my name in there somewhere, um, uh, or even just MWC, Mornings with Carmen. Then when I am back online, I'll see all those. And so that would be awesome, awesome, awesome as well, to know who you are, where you're listening, what's happening where you are, how we can be praying for you. Okay, I uh, mm, I had a whole thing set up for the uh, the opening of this hour, but now I've used up all that time. So just chatting. Which, you know, some days it's just good, right? It's just good to have a chat. So you are listening to Mornings with Carmen. We're seeking to bring the mind of Christ to bear on what is happening in the world. So just know I'm praying with you about all of um, all the headlines that all of us are facing each and every day. But right now, we are going to talk about sex. <clears throat> You're like, wow, there was no transition there. Carmen just jumped right in. All right, well, that's because Jennifer Kwame jumps right in. The book is... More to the story. So I want you to think for a moment about the story, the story that the world tells us about sex and sexuality, um, identity, love, marriage, the story that the world tells us about all of those things. And then I want you to recognize and consider with me that God, God's got a different story. There's a different storyline. There's different characters. Marriage means something, sex means something, and it's for something, and it's good. We're going to talk about all of that next and how we talk with our teenagers about sex and everything related to it. Mm -hmm. That's up next here on Mornings with Carmen. Jennifer Kwame is all about helping uh, teenagers see the Bible's positive vision for relationships. And she's here to help us um, not only see that way, but communicate that um, to others as well. Jennifer, welcome to Mornings with Carmen. Thank you for having me. All right. There's a big story. There's a big story. So um, I like the way that you talk about it as the story that has transformed you and lots of others. So let's just start there. What's the big story? What does it mean to say that there's more to the story? <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah, I think my my hope in writing this book about sex was to help them, help teenagers in particular, see how that one area of life fits into the larger story of scripture. And in a nutshell, that would be understanding how and why we're created by God and what it means to be made in his image, what his design and intention was for marriage and for our sexuality, but then also to understand the fall, how sin came in and what that means, what all went wrong and why we still feel so many of those effects of sin and brokenness in our lives, including in our sexuality, in our relationships and in our own hearts. And then, of course, how Jesus came 
to be the redemption to all those broken things and how he is truly good news and what that means for our sexuality and our relationships. And then, then ultimately, the best part is what we have to look forward to in eternity with Jesus that will be better by far than anything that we know here or anything we can even imagine. Um, I like the the language of an eternal echo. I like the the sense that there's a there's a reason we feel this strongly about sex. Mm-hmm. There's a reason we're um, like literally enamored by the idea. Um, can you talk a little bit about that sort of eternal echo, that resonance that that we have with sexuality and the reason behind it? Yeah, I think it's important just to realize that God designed um, our sexuality for a purpose and that marriage, you know, marriage is meant to be this picture or foreshadowing of the eternal marriage of Christ in the church and how that is the best thing. You know, if we think about intimacy and joy and pleasure and all of these things that draw us uh, to sexuality, that it's true there, but it really is just this echo, this foreshadowing of an even better, deeper kind of intimacy, deeper kind of joy that Jesus offers us. Um, Again, we are uh, talking with Jennifer Kwame. The book is More to the Story, Deep Answers to Real Questions on Attraction, Identity, and Relationships. This really is written for... um, those of us who are in relationship with um, tweens and teens, talk with us about, you know, like, who is this book for and how do you intend it to be used? Sure. I wrote the book specifically to teenagers because it felt to me like that was that was a need. I work in student ministry and, you know, I just have started to notice how many teens, this issue of sexuality kind of becomes a watershed issue for their faith. You know, they struggle sometimes to reconcile what they hear from culture around them with what they hear the Bible teaches and still believe, is God truly loving? Is he truly good? And seeing some of them walk away from the church or from their faith because they couldn't answer those questions well, um, just kind of broke my heart. And I couldn't find a book that said what I would want to say to teens on this topic. There are some, you know, some other great ones written to adults, but it felt like the whole was uh, a book that was written directly to teens and to their world that talked about some of these things. So, yeah, I, my hope is that middle schoolers or high schoolers, kind of wherever they're starting in their faith or in this journey, uh, could pick up this book and just come to see Jesus as good news for all of these. Okay, so that means you're going to need two. Yeah, you're going to need two copies. You're going to need one for yourself and one for your kid or one for yourself and one for your grandkid or one for yourself and one um, for that kid that you're discipling or mentoring. Um, we're going to jump into some of the big questions that Jennifer asks and answers or that young people are asking and Jennifer answers in this book. Um, things like, why does God care about what I do with my body? How do I figure out what um, really makes me, me? We're going to pick up those questions and several others in just a moment. We're talking with Jennifer Kwame. The book is More to the Story, Deep Answers to Real Questions on Attraction, Identity, and Relationships. You're listening to Mornings with Carmen. Jesus loves the little children. You guys know that. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. And right now, there are little children in the world who need Jesus. They also need things like basic food and medical care. Jesus tells us that what we do for the least of these, the little ones, we do for him. So this is your time to become the champion of one child, to change their life. When you sponsor just one child, you plant seeds of hope and you work together with people who are on the ground to change the families, the communities, the future. You might not feel like you could change the world, but you can for one child. Meet the kids and find your child at MyFaithRadio.com. Did you ever have sex education in Sunday school? Did you ever have like genuine conversations about identity and sexuality 
with a youth pastor. And then you say to yourself, well, I don't know, do we even like let them talk about that? Because, you know, then it gets like, you know, is that what the parents want them to hear? Like, it's weird. It's weird. We all just recognize it. And so you are probably listening today and you're saying, I have no idea um, wh- how sexuality helps me to glimpse something deeper. I don't know what Jennifer's talking about when she's talking about, you know, ultimately we're going to live as the bride of Christ and that marriage is this like ultimate um, uh, reality that we're going to live in forever and eternity. It, it, it's just, I don't know what she's talking about. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the book is More to the Story, Deep Answers to Real Questions on Attraction, Identity, and Relationships. Jennifer Kwame is the author, and she is our conversation partner this morning. Jennifer, let's jump into the second big question that you address in the book, and that is the question of identity. So, you know, the the question that a student might ask, a young person might ask, uh, you know, how do I figure out what really makes me me? Um. Can you talk about the three layers of identity that you identify um, in your answer to the question about figuring out what really makes me me? Um, These yeah, three layers. Great question. The way, yeah, the way God created. You. All right, I'll just, I'll just go. Ahead. I'll just give it away. I'm just going to tell you right now. I'm on page. <laughs> I'm on page fifty eight. Yeah. So. Um, these layers of identity, I'll just, I'll, I'll brief people in on them and then you can unpack them further. The way God created you. And then layer two, as a believer, the way God recreated you. And then this third layer of being called, filled, gifted, and sent. I just thought that this in particular, in terms of helping us understand how as Christians, we answer the identity question um, versus the way the world tends to tell us to find our identity. I just thought this was such a powerful portion of the book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks. I do think it, I mean, identity is such a huge question, particularly for teens as they're trying to figure out who they are and how they fit in. Um, yeah, and so part of our identity, just thinking about even our bodies, which often doesn't really get emphasized in identity conversations in our culture. Sometimes there's kind of this idea that like, oh, the real me is what's inside and I'm just stuck in this body. And so to be able to say you are designed by God and made in his image. And when he made uh, the first human, he made a body and then breathed into it the breath of life. And that's it's such a beautiful thing. And so to think about God created you in his image, you know what that means. But then the second later, like you said, is that if you are a believer, God has recreated you and you are a new creation in Christ. And so all of these beautiful things are true of you, that you are chosen and beloved and forgiven. You know, you're reclaimed by God for these good works that he has prepared for you to do. And I think that's so profound and so encouraging. And then the third layer of our identity in Christ is kind of these particular gifts and callings that he has given uniquely to each of us as individuals and how we get to be a part of building his kingdom in these ways that are personal to how he has designed each of us. I think we often, um, all of us often, not just teenagers, but as Christians, we often sort of leap over the second layer. We, you know, Mm -hmm. all right, this is the way God created me, male or female, he created us. Um, in his image, he created us. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. He knit me together in my mother's womb. Like the those those mm. creation conversations, and then we leap over mm. the the layer two conversation, um, you know, and jump right into the all right. You've been called. You're filled. You're gifted. You're sent. Go do it. Go go do these things on behalf of Jesus. I really appreciated. Um, the way you described and and gave us so many um, conversational opportunities in talking about the second layer. So I'm going to read this paragraph from um, from this portion of Jennifer's book. I'm going to read this paragraph. And as I'm reading this paragraph, I want you to think about having a conversation. Because in the discussion guide, it says, like, let's look at the list of, of these second layer identities. Um, which one of these speaks to you most? So as I read this list of what we're going to call second layer, um, second layers of identity here, you as a 
believer, which one of these speaks to you most? Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You are chosen. Ephesians 1, 4. You are beloved. Ephesians 5, 1. You are forgiven. Colossians 1, 14. You were bought at a price. 1 Corinthians 6, 20. You were reclaimed for God. 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. You are a member of the body of Christ, 1 Corinthians 12, 27. You are Christ's bride, Revelation 19, 7 and 8. He calls you his friend, John 15, 15. He has good works that he planned for you to do before the world was ever made, Ephesians 2, 10. You are more than a conqueror through him who loves you, Romans 8, 37. Just as when God renamed Abraham or Peter, this new identity that he speaks over you is unshakable and much more profound than any identity you might speak over yourself. So in the discussion guide, um, Jennifer encourages us to have a conversation, to really think about which one of those second layer identities speaks to us most. And so I'm just going to ask you, like, which one of those speaks to you most when you think about who you are as a new creation in Christ Jesus? So, Jennifer, um, I, I love the way um, you weave, like, lists into the book that enable us to then ask open-ended questions like, which one of these speaks most to you? Mm-hmm. Um, or open-ended questions like, well, you know— How do people around us tend to find their identity? I think that part of what you've given us in this book is uh, is the ability to enter into conversations with teens that are natural for you to have as a person who works with youth, but have become extremely unnatural for the rest of us to have with young people. Mm. Mm -hmm. It really was a hope of mine that you know, it can be read on its own by students, but it's definitely ideal for someone to walk through this with them or for them to do it in a small group in community. And so, yeah, we definitely wanted to make sure there were those conversation questions and because it, it probably opens up more questions even than it answers, right? There's so many things students are wrestling with. So to have someone that they can talk with about those things is really a gift. There are uh, questions in here like, what am I supposed to do with such strong feelings related to desire? There's a gender conversation about why does it matter what pronouns I use, on and on and on. Um, it's a, it's, it's a question-based book, and it really is designed to answer the real questions young people are really asking versus us trying to, you know, offer answers to questions they're not asking. So I appreciate that as well. Let's, um, let's close with this because it's where you land the plane. Is it worth the cost? Yeah, I think one of the, I mean, yes. (laughs) I think as I have talked with students and just been in relationships with some of them walking through these hard things, I've kind of landed on these two key points that I like to talk about when, um, when these conversations come up. And the first one is that, yeah, following Jesus is, has a high calling and a high cost that we're called to die to ourselves and to give up everything to follow him. And we can't minimize that. I mean, sometimes students, all of us, right, have to give up significant things to follow him. But then secondly, that what we gain in Christ is better by far than anything that we leave behind. I love the parable that Jesus told about the man that found the treasure hidden in the field. And he immediately in his joy goes and sells everything that he owns and purchases that field. And I just think that's such a picture of, we can joyfully give up whatever we are called to in order to follow Christ because what we gain in him is just so much better. It's so good. It's so good. Um, Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for the conversation. Thank you for the book. Jennifer Kwame uh, is the author of More to the Story, Deep Answers to Real Questions on Attraction, Identity, and Relationships. It's from our friends over at the Good Book Company, so uh, thank you to them as well. Jennifer, thank you for joining us. 
Yeah, it's been an honor to be on here. Thank you. Yeah, likewise. So it is, um, I'm going to just call it the Jennifer Hour because up next we've got Jennifer Hayden Epperson. Um, we have talked with uh, Jennifer, this next Jennifer, before on the the topic of her book, The Pioneer's Way. We thought it would be fun to have her back here at the opening of a new year. What does it look like to identify the pioneering spirit Um what does it mean to be a pioneer? Who is a pioneer? What if I told you that I have no question that you are a pioneer? Mm-hmm. Um, how would we discover what trail needs to be blazed and how it is that God might be calling you or me to blaze that trail for ourselves, for our family, for our church, for our community, for the country? Um, there is a like way of the pioneer, and we're going to talk a little bit about what it looks like um, to identify the pioneering spirit in ourselves and then to lead, um, to lead out as pioneers in the various um, spheres of influence in our lives. So here's where it starts. What irritates you? <laughs> Literally, that is where the conversation begins. What irritates you when you think about the way things are working or not working around you in the world uh, where God has ordained that you should live, what irritates you? Mm -hmm. It's like the pee under the pillow or under the mattress or the rock in the shoe. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about what irritates us, and then we're going to work to make the world different. That's up next here on Mornings with Carmen. Uh, this next Jennifer is a radio girl. I will describe her that way. She's got uh, real bona fides in in radio. She's also an author, um, and she joins us today to talk about her book, The Pioneer's Way, Leading a Trailblazing Life That Builds Meaning for Your Family, Your Community, and You. Jennifer, welcome to Mornings with Carmen. Thank you so much, Carmen. Great to be back with you, and Happy New Year. So much fun. Happy New Year to you. Um, your life has uh, has had some changes. So it, it has. Yeah. I misintroduced you the first time uh, because you have a new last name. Your new last name is Stokes. Why? Why so? It, How so? How did this happen? Well, Who is he? Um, this is it's pretty amazing. I'll give you the Reader's Digest version. Um, I met a man I was not supposed to meet on a Christian dating uh, site. And I say I wasn't supposed to meet him because we had put tight parameters around ourselves. Um, For me, two hours, I thought maybe someone would pop out of the Twin Cities. And uh, for him, 30 minutes. But he is a man who is from Bedford, England. And I'm here in Minnesota. And somehow the Lord connected us 4,000 miles apart. And a year later, we are married. So that's that's how that happened. Okay. And what is his name? His name is Richard Stokes. And as I said, he's British. So our conversations we, are really so you, interesting. You know, like, we totally want to talk to him now that we know he's British because we just like, we already like the sound of his voice. We do. And he's actually <laughs> um, a retired English and drama teacher. And <gasps> I saw him in a Shakespeare over the summer. It was wonderful. <laughs> Okay, that is really really fun. All right, so you are um, you are in the Twin Cities doing what? Where where are you? What are you doing? Well, I'm in Mankato, and good I good morning, am the- Mankato. Yeah, I am in Mankato, and um, originally from New England. So hello, Hartford, um, and I am the executive director of a Christian radio network. We love that. We love that. Yeah. Um, all right, so the Pioneers Way. Leading a trailblazing life that builds meaning for your family, your community, and you. Um, maybe we should just revisit here quickly. What What is a pioneer and who is a pioneer in terms of this conversation? Okay. Um, this is very interesting because I was fascinated uh, with leadership. Um, I wanted to get better at my job. That's how that, that started out. And so I began to study um, not only myself, but formally as well, uh, going back to college. And then as uh, time went on, Carmen, I began to see that there was a shaking out or a difference 
between what I call status quo leadership and then what I came to develop as uh, in my mind as pioneering leadership. And I think all of us are familiar with that status quo leadership. So you have a leader and that leader has a goal and a mission and is leading people toward the fulfillment of that mission. But it's really the methodology that got to me. You know, it's, you know, we're doing things the same way um, at the same time with the same tools and sometimes the same people and we're expecting better results. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that we have a, a funny meme that, you know, doing things the same way is the, you know, the definition of insanity. Um, but we get caught. It's well-meaning. I'm, I'm not putting that down. It, it is well-meaning and we do need these types of leaders to continue moving us forward. But then there's the pioneering leader. The pioneering leader is the, the one who is like, can we try something new? Can we try something different? Can we allocate some funds to do some research? Um, can we go to a new space and a new place? And a lot of times uh, people can get behind that person, but many times people see them as rocking the boat and troublemakers. So I like to think of pioneers as the tip of the spear, the, the, yeah, the spear. And uh, they, are, they are the elite forces of leadership. And they're the ones that go in wanting to accomplish a goal in a place that people have never been, never seen, and in so doing influences others to participate in realizing and expanding that goal. Church planters might be good examples of people. Church who planters, we, absolutely. We, we would just all think to ourselves, okay, there's a um, there there's a person who um, who fits this mold. I, um, you know, you and I are speaking on the Faith Radio Network today, but 75 years ago, there was no radio signal, no Christian radio signal in the Twin Cities, and there was a then university or college, I guess at the time, president named Billy Graham, who said there should be like this newfangled thing like radio, there should be ministry going out over radio and challenge the students um, to help him make it happen. Cast this vision, you know, people gave up their lunch money um, and they bought a signal. And that is KTIS today. Um, yes. And so, you know, I when I think about when I think about trailblazing in this way, when I think about pioneering spirits, Billy Graham is one of those that I might call to mind. Tell us a story about a pioneer who inspires your thinking on this subject. Well, I go back to, this sounds very strange, but I go back to Dr. Horace Wells, who lived in the mm -hmm. early part of the, the 19th century. Um, he is a fellow New Englander. And from a faith perspective, I might mention another fellow New Englander, and that's D.L. Moody. Um, but let me stick with Horace Wells, since we've got listeners in, in Hartford, Connecticut. That's where he's from. And he was a man of faith uh, in Jesus Christ. And he was also a dentist. At a very young age, he had accomplished quite a bit uh, in regard to dentistry and dental surgery. But talking about irritants, wow. He had to extract teeth at a time where there was no anesthesia. Mm -hmm. And so he was, his compassion, Carmen, for people was so great that he would be traumatized by pulling teeth and helping the person who was in excruciating pain, taking the teeth out. So he was faced with a dilemma. And it was interesting. It was just at the time when people became aware a um, few decades earlier about uh, gases. And for example, we're talking about nitrous oxide and what he eventually discovered is laughing gas, which could be then used on a patient during dental surgery so that the person would receive the care they needed by having the tooth extracted without the pain. So there's the irritant. He quit dentistry and dental surgery several times, but he kept coming back because people needed help. He lived in a reality that he couldn't cope with the helping people and pulling teeth out and then having the pain. He couldn't coexist with those two things. And eventually the Lord used him uh, to discover nitrous oxide and to use it to help people uh, recover from pain in their mouth. It's so good. And we're so thankful for that. Right. I mean, I just, <laughs> amen, because I yeah. learned about him when I had my teeth extracted. So, <laughs> mm. 
You know, I was just praying yesterday for, uh, or day before yesterday, for a listener who, um, you know, she was having a hard time. Her name's Gay. She was having a hard time um, getting her blood pressure to not be so high when she went in for this dental procedure to have a tooth extraction. And she's like, would you pray that, like, God would give me the peace to sit there and not, you know, I I, I got to get this, like, this has to happen. So anyway, um, I just want to give God the glory. We prayed and she was able to go and sit and trust God in the midst of that. And her blood pressure stayed at an appropriate level. So she Amen. could have a tooth, ex- tooth extraction. But I am also thinking to myself, so thankful for whatever drugs they gave her, right? In addition to the peace of God, which passes all understanding, I am also thankful when I'm having a dental procedure that there are <clears throat> pain abating or things that put me, you know, <clears throat> maybe not completely asleep, maybe sometimes completely asleep. Like all of that is so important. All right. So um, the connection between pioneering and leadership, we might think, you know, there might be something in our community or in our family where we're like, oh, I could have a pioneering spirit about that, but I'm not a leader. Can you can you bridge that gap for us? What's the relationship between pioneering and leadership? Yeah, um, you know, it's very interesting. Um, I was visiting a new church, obviously, with a new marriage and a, a new husband. We're, we're visiting churches to find the place for us. And I happened into a, a church where um, I don't normally go in and, you know, I say my name is Jennifer, but, you know, in conversation, people will say, oh, I read your book. And that was very surprising to, to go into a new place and, and to find some readers there. But one of the common things I'm hearing, Carmen, is, you know, I'm really not a pioneer. I mean, there people are already, you know, they're reading it. They They love the stories in the book, but they're saying, oh, that's not me. And one of the first things I like to do is say, you know, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know what the Lord will cause you to do um, or will call you to do. Um, for example, Gideon. Um, so I want to say people who may not think of themselves as leaders or pioneers, you know, don't count yourself out. So now the difference with pioneering and leadership um, you know, many people rise to the top and enjoy uh, leaders, you know, being leaders. But then there is that special call that somebody may have to go into a new space or a new place. And I want to say that's the difference between being a leader and a pioneer. And there are also some personality traits as well. Mm-hmm. Um, a pioneer um, is possibility driven. They have a higher tolerance for taking risks than perhaps the status quo leader would have. They're probing. They're very, very curious. You mentioned the irritant at the beginning of our conversation, and that usually drives them to look and search for a better future and overcoming obstacles. Um, For example, like curing uh, polio, or in our day, we're working on curing cancer and COVID. Uh, Pioneers are typically persistent they have a stick to and they may even seem aset- obsessed. Whereas you, we think of leaders as being, you know, you're a little more balanced. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. They have to have their own skin in the game. And I kind of co- coined a phrase uh, or, a, or a term called pomance. Like they, po means um, skin in French. And they have a, a, you know, a romance with this thing. So put those things together and, and, like Ernest Shackleton, they have to be on the journey themselves. They just can't sit in the bleachers. They're also principled. You know, they have this conviction that their quest can be achieved if given enough time, effort, and resources. And they're also, they can be very persuasive. You know, they can be very, uh, what we would say, charismatic people convincing others of the validity of their mission, gaining support, and even uh, sponsorship. For example, like Shackleton did. So, you know, I think there's some overlap between leaders and pioneers. And somebody may start out as a leader and then find themselves in a pioneering place. So those are some of the things and why I say I believe that pioneers are sort of the tip of the spear of the leadership area. And, you know, they have that special call to start something new and to take the risk to be able to do it. It's so good. All right. As you're listening, uh, do you say to yourself, you know what? I I 
there is something that irritates me. Uh, let's see. One of our friends um, says on here, yes, child sex trafficking irritates me. Yes. So there you go. There's an irritant. Now, the question is, are you going to, now that God has revealed this thing that is wrong in the world in such a significant way that you want to see it changed, you want to see it made different, does God then also give you, has he given you the um, the personality characteristics, this obsessed, provocative, principled conviction um, that no matter what, I I am going to see this through. I am going to see this changed. This um, this is going to yield to the light. This darkness, this particular darkness, is going to yield to the light. Like that's the pioneering spirit, and um, uh, so we're going to continue our conversation here with Jennifer Stokes in just a moment. I'm really just asking you to like consider like is there something that God is calling you to pioneer on or pioneer toward? You're listening to Mornings with Carmen. I'm Carmen LeBurge, host of Mornings with Carmen. How good are you? You feeling good? You doing good? God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Goodness is the character of God and the work of God. But we don't always feel so good, do we? I mean, are you good? You feeling good? You doing good? Maybe you have a sense that you need some healing that you desire some wholeness. Our friend Susie Larson has a new book, Waking Up to the Goodness of God, 40 Days Toward Healing and Wholeness, and we'd like for you to have a copy. Faith Radio is giving away 100 copies of Susie's new book, and we'd like for you to have one. So enter to win yours now at MyFaithRadio.com. We want to know the goodness of God all the time. Connecting faith to life, Faith Radio. Continuing our conversation with Jennifer Stokes, author of The Pioneer's Way. What what irritates you? What is the quest to which God has called you? Um, when you? When you look at the world and you say, this is the one thing that must be changed. It must be made different. Um, and then how do you get there from where you are? What does it look like to walk in the way forward? What's the equipment you need? What's the team that needs to be built? All of that is a part of what Jennifer unpacks in The Pioneer's Way, and we've got some copies to give away today. And so if um, if this is the book you've been waiting for, text the word BOOK to 877-933-2484. Again, uh, copies of The Pioneer's Way to give away today. Text the word BOOK to 877-933-2484. Um, Jennifer, how... How do we respond if we are a pioneer and we have that pioneering spirit and we are on our quest, we know what our thing is, we're working in that direction, we're fiercely committed to it, but there are sure are an awful lot of people around us who are like, could you just settle down and um, us, you're, you got like, could, this is what we're doing over, you know, like we're just over here going around the same pole and you want us to strike out in this new direction. Like, how do we break free? Like, where do we find the courage to break free from the status quo and just get out there and do the thing we know God has called us to do? Well, I think the first step, especially for those of us who are Christ followers, is go straight to the Lord. <laughs> hmm. I know that sounds like well, of course she would say that, but it's true. We need to hey, we pray. Like, and have, we like I'm Sunday sorry? school answers here. That's a Sunday school answer, and we like those. We like them. We love them because they're true. They're our true north, if we want to use compass analogy. You know, we pray. We have that connection, that personal relationship with, with Jesus Christ, and and the Holy Spirit is ministering us. And where are we being stirred up from to begin with? We know that it's his spirit that's stirring us up and saying, look at this thing. I am calling you to do something about it. So we search the scriptures and we pray. Um, there are brothers and sisters in Christ. And I, I want to put a caveat with this, but I have gone to people, especially when I've been at a pioneering point in my life. And I've said, does this sound like me? You who have mm. been my mentor you who have been in one case, you know, my mother, um, when she was with us, um, friends who know me well, is this a me thing? Is this a Jen thing? 
Um, and they will sometimes say, yes, I see your gifting in this area, or I would be a little cautious about this area. So you, you get that godly wisdom from people you know who are supporting you and have your best interest at heart. You know, you envision that different future. Um, you know, do some writing, do some journaling. What define it? What would that different future look like? For example, um, the caller, um, actually the person who texted in who says, I hate sex slavery. You know, is there something in his or her area, geographic area that is being done about this? Because this is everywhere, right, Carmen? So it's, you know, they may be, he or she may be called to pioneer in that particular geographic area. And then, as you said, my last point here is be ready for pushback. Be ready for the naysayers, especially if the pioneering effort is for the kingdom. Because we know that there's a spiritual enemy. We know that there are naysayers who say this cannot be done. And I also want to add, be ready for those voices, your own voices that you hear that when you get tired, when you start to hurt, when there's some disappointment, um, and a loss of hope. Those things, be aware, those things will be around the corner. And those things that are in our own hearts may work against us as well. That's why it's very, very important to be connected with the Lord. And he will give you the encouragement and the hope, the word, just when you need it to continue your quest. All right. And then um, I know we don't have a long time to talk about this, so it might be a one word answer. Um do I have to, after I've done it, after we've arrived, do I have to be the one that stays and babysits it? <laughs> the answer is no. I think Praise the Jesus. best pioneers, yes, make uh, make provision for the legacy of that thing that so, was so important. They worked so hard for the Lord called them to, to continue into the future. Yeah, and so I love the succession planning that's included in this entire conversation. All right, so if you're saying to yourself, all right, I, I want this, I need help with this, I am a pioneer, I just don't know how to live into that calling, um, this is the book for you, The Pioneer's Way, Leading a Trailblazing Life that Builds Meaning for Your Family, Your Community, and You. We've got copies to give away. Text the word BOOK to 877-933-2484. Jennifer, thank you so much for being with us today on Mornings with Carmen. Carmen, my thanks goes to you for having me back. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Such a pleasure. So much fun. And congratulations on your uh, on your nuptials. That is so exciting. Thank you. We're thrilled. It's wonderful. All right, um, friend, um, today, let me just remind you um, to be living into the Word of God. Get yourself into the Word of God before you get out there into the world that God so loves. We want to uh, be bringing the mind of Christ to bear on every issue of the day. In order to do that, we need to apprehend the mind of Christ. We need to know what Jesus is thinking, how he's seeing things, and then how he is calling us to live as agents of his grace and ambassadors of uh, his kingdom, provisionally demonstrating what it looks like to be kingdom people in the midst of the kingdoms of this world. So get yourself into the word of God and then get out there and have a great day. Thanks for listening to Mornings with Carmen LeBurge. Podcasts like this are available because of your support. If it's important to you to hear things that encourage your faith, click the link in the show notes to give now. And thanks.